Hi everyone, my name is Miss Huss. I'm a first grade teacher at Thurgood Marshall Elementary School in South Seattle. Hi Bullpups. I hope everyone's doing well, staying healthy and safe, and I hope you're able to fit some learning time in each day. So the last video that I did for you, we read the first half of this nonfiction book, The Big Blue Whale, written by Nicole Davies and illustrated, illustrated by Nick Malland. If you haven't watched that first part yet, where I read the first half, I recommend you go back and do that first, and then come back and watch this one when you're done. So I want you to think about, what did you learn about blue whales what, the last time when I read the first half of this book to you? What did you learn? Okay. So I am at my home and I'm not in a classroom and you're at your home and not in a classroom, so you don't have a turn and talk partner necessarily. Uh, you might have someone next to you, which is great. You can just turn and talk to them whenever I ask you a question. But if you don't have a turn and talk partner like me, grab a stuffy or a doll or anything you want to turn and talk to. So I'll give you a moment to go find a turn and talk partner because I'll be asking you several questions uh, during this lesson. So go now and grab a partner. All right, hopefully everybody gathered a little friend to talk to. So back to my question. My question was, what did you learn about blue whales in the first half of this book? So go ahead and turn and talk to your partner now. I'll let you go first. What did you learn about blue whales? Go ahead and turn back towards me. My partner and I discussed that blue whales are the biggest creature on earth. Bigger than elephants, giraffes, dinosaurs. And we also talked about that they're mammals. That's something we learned last time. They breathe air and they blow air out of their big blowhole and it goes poof. I also remember that they eat a lot of krill. So much, so much krill, which are tiny little shrimp-like creatures in the ocean. And last time, we also learned about how they eat the krill, okay? By gulping in a bunch of water and krill and then spitting out the extra water, eating the krill. Maybe you and your partner discussed those same things about what you learned so now I'm going to read the second half of this book. And as I read, I want you to think about what new things are you learning as I read? And also, what are you wondering as well? Okay, what are you learning? So be thinking while I'm reading, the whole time I'm reading. And we'll have a few times when we do turn and talks during this book as well. And this is how the blue whale, whale spends the summer, eating krill and getting fat. But in the fall, the polar seas, that's the seas in the North and the South Pole. But in the fall, the polar seas freeze over. So you might notice the small print right here. I'm gonna skip that right now and I'll read that next in the next lesson. The krill hide under the ice where the whale can <clears throat> not catch them. So the whale swims away from the icy cold and the winter storms. Day after day, the blue whale swims slowly and steadily toward its winter home. Its huge tail beats up and down to push it along. Its flippers steer it left or right. For two months and more, the whale swims until at last it reaches the calm, warm seas near the equator. Here's the equator right here, the middle of the earth. There it stays all winter. And there, the blue whale mother gives birth to her baby, where storms and cold weather can't hurt it. The blue whale's baby slithers from her body, tail first, 
Gently, she nudges, that means pushes. Gently, she nudges it to the surface to take its first breath. Then the baby dives beneath her to take its first drink of milk. All through the winter, the blue whale keeps her baby close. It feeds on her creamy milk and it grows and grows. In spring, the two whales return to the polar seas to feast on krill together. But by the fall, the young whale is big enough to live on its own. We're gonna take a pause there so you can turn and talk to your partner about how do blue whales take care of their babies? How do blue whales take care of their babies? Grab your partner and turn and talk. I'll let my partner go first. How do blue whales take care of their babies? Hopefully you had enough time to talk with your partner. Go ahead and turn back towards me. So my partner and I discussed that blue whales take care of their babies by as soon as they're born, they nudge them out to take a breath since they're mammals. Um, and we discussed last time that mammals breathe air, have live babies, the babies, and then they take care of their babies by the babies drink the mom's milk. and the, they stay together while the baby is drinking the mom's milk and then the mom takes the baby to eat some krill. So I'm wondering if that's what you were thinking about how the mom takes care of the baby. Well, all right, I'm gonna keep reading. Keep thinking about what you're learning and what you're wondering. So mother and young whale part and begin the long journey back to the equator. A blue whale may travel from the polar seas to the equator and back every year of its life. Sometimes it will swim with other blue whales, but mostly it'll swim alone. Yet the blue whale may not be as lonely as it seems because sometimes it makes a hum a hum so loud and so low that it can travel for thousands of miles through the sea to reach other blue whales. Only a very low hum could travel so far, and only a very big animal could make a hum so low. Perhaps that's why blue whales are the biggest creatures on Earth, so that they can talk to one another even when they are far apart. Who knows what they say? Here I am would be enough. because in the vastness of the green seas, even a blue whale is small and hard to find. Can you find the blue whale in this picture? There it is. All right, that's the end of the book. I would like you to think about what did you learn about blue whales as I read this book? Or was there anything new that surprised you? What did you learn? What surprised you? Think about that. Was there anything interesting that you learned? You can turn and tell your partner if you want. You can just think. Something that I learned that surprised me was that they travel so far to the equator every year. That was something I learned that surprised me. And I was surprised also that they don't stay with their babies, right? The young whale is big enough, by the fall, the young whale is big enough to live on its own. So that was something I learned that was kind of surprising too. I also learned that they can make a very, very low, loud hum that other whales can hear very far away from them. I wonder if you were thinking some of those same things as I was thinking. Now I want you to think about what you wonder. We wondered last time 
these three things before we read this book. And we wondered these three things after we read um, part of the book. We wondered how big blue whales are. We wondered if they're really blue. We wondered how many babies they have. How long does it take them to feel full? How fast does a blue whale swim? And how long can they stay underwater? So now take a few minutes to talk to your partner about what do you wonder now? Okay, turn and talk. What are you wondering now? you had enough time to turn and talk to your partner and my partner and I discussed some of the things we were wondering one thing my partner was wondering is I wonder how big the babies are when they are born I was wondering I wonder how much milk the babies drink because whales are big so they must need a lot of milk I wonder how old the babies are when they separate from their mom and they go in different directions. I wonder how old the babies are when they leave their mom. Let's go back to the first few questions up here that we wrote uh, before and while we read to see if any of our questions were answered so far. Uh, our first one is, I wonder how big blue whales are. That question was partially answered, where it says they're the biggest creatures on Earth. It doesn't say exactly what size they are, but it does say they're big. I wonder if blue whales are really blue. So we can see in the pictures here, in some of the pictures, they look pretty blue. In other pictures, they look more gray. So maybe we would need to look at a real photograph of a blue whale to get the answer to that question. I wonder how many babies they have. In this part, when she has her baby, she has one baby at a time. I do still wonder if they can have more than one baby at a time. I wonder how long it takes a blue whale to feel full. So that question was not answered um, in this book. I wonder how fast a blue whale can swim. That question also wasn't answered in this book. So let's think about what can you do if you finish a book and you still have things you're wondering, you still have questions you want to answer. So something you could do would be to read other books about whales. You could also search on the internet. Like I said, you can look at actual photographs of whale, blue whales to see if they're actually blue. You could also talk to an expert, a marine biologist, someone who knows a lot about whales could answer your questions. Uh, you could also watch TV shows, documentaries to see if your questions are answered. So there are many ways to get answered answers because just one book may not answer all of the questions that we have. So we have to continue to do more research, find out more if you want to learn more. Okay. So now uh, we are going to practice with our own nonfiction books. You are going to find your own nonfiction book in your house. If you have one, 
great. Go get it. If you don't, it's okay. You don't have to read a nonfiction book. Just grab any book. I'm going to model for you what I want you to do after you read your own book. So you'll read your own nonfiction book or any book you have, and then you're going to write down some things you wonder and some things you learn. Okay. So this book is called Elephants by Dr. Carla Litchfield. Elephants Close Up. And I can tell this is a non-fiction book. It has real photographs and it's gonna give me real true information about elephants. Elephants are the largest land animals on earth. There are elephants that live in Africa and elephants that live in Asia. African elephants are bigger than Asian elephants. All African elephants have tusks, but only some male Asian elephants have tusks. Though elephants have thick, tough skin, their skin is very sensitive to the sun, and moms will often shade their young to prevent them from getting sunburnt. There's a close-up picture of their skin. Elephant tusks are used to dig for food, to move branches out of the way, and sometimes as weapons when fighting with other elephants. African Elephant ears are about three times the size of Asian elephant ears. Elephant trunks are used for gathering food, drinking, washing, smelling, and communicating with other elephants. Trunks allow elephants to reach the tasty top of branches that they love to eat. So I'm going to pause there. I'm not going to read the whole book. But I will pretend as if I read this whole book. And after I've read the whole book, I'll think about what do I wonder, what have I learned while reading this book? And you're going to write down some of the things you wonder and some things you've learned. So some of you may have your student response book for making meaning at home. You can grab that and write in there. If you don't have that, you may have picked up a Seattle Public Schools packet at one of their lunch sites and you can write in there. And you can also just grab your own piece of paper and write down the title of your book and what you learned and what you wonder. So I'm gonna model that for you now. The title of my book is Elephants Close Up. All right. So I'm gonna write first something I learned while reading this. So I learned that elephants can get a sunburn. I never really thought about the fact that animals can get a sunburn just like people do. I wonder if it's as painful for animals as it is for us. So you can write multiple things you learned, right? I learned that elephants can get a sunburn. I could also write that I learned that there are Asian elephants and African elephants and they have different sized ears. So that's how we can tell them apart. So I can keep writing more things if I want to. So now I'll go down to the bottom part where I write something I wonder. While I was reading in my book, I was wondering, I wonder if elephants I wonder if elephants can live in Australia well, they said elephants live in Asia Africa we also have elephants in zoos do they have elephants on all the continents like Australia do they have them in zoos over there? Uh, I wonder why elephants have different sized ears. What do they use their big, huge ears for? That's something else I could write down. Okay, so now it's your turn. You're going to find a book at your house, nonfiction if you have it, or any other book if you don't have nonfiction. You're gonna read your book, and then you're gonna write down things that you learned and things that you wonder as you were reading that book. Right. Thank you for watching this video today. 
and I hope that you have fun reading your book and you learn a lot and you have a lot of great questions. Thank you.